Well, hey guys, finally got me a new scope. Rigel DS1052E. Well, my old scope came as a kit. I built that, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago. And it's a single channel. It's really good for up to 500 kilohertz. And the screen's kind of low resolution. But it carried me through for all those years. But I was feeling constrained and yeah, I can't spend a lot of money on stuff like this. So, uh, uh seemed, this seemed to be a, a good scope to get. So I ended up buying this thing uh, for 330 bucks. Not too bad. I won't say much on this. There's a lot of reviews on YouTube, but I might make an, a separate video. If you want me to, uh, say something about it, just holler and I'll, um, maybe I'll make a video. But what I'm doing today is playing with uh, digital to analog conversion using this uh, little pickaxe chip here. It's just a 8-pin dual inline IC. And uh, this stuff here is not even connected. It's not part of the circuit. Really, the only thing you need to make this work is a capacitor and a resistor in run mode. Unless your uh, circuit requires more components, which this one does. I'll get to in a minute. These are neat because you don't need a programmer board. You can just take it over to the computer, plug in the serial port wires, and program it right here on the board. But anyway, what I'm doing here is, like I say, I'm experimenting with uh, analog to digital conversion. And uh, I have this chip set up now for four outputs. You can program the chip to use some of the pins as inputs or outputs so I have four outputs set right now for four bits of uh, data going into a um, resistor network and this is simply a digital to analog conversion stage. And here's what it looks like as a schematic. So this network here is your pretty much classical basic resistor network using to convert the digital voltages to uh, an analog level in the output. So with four lines here, four output lines or four bits, we have uh, 16 combinations so we can get... Oh, sorry about that. Batteries quit right in the middle there. Uh, so what was I saying? Uh, 16 possible combinations. You know, four zeros. You can go from zero zero zero, count up all the way to one 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 one, which is decimal value 15, and then recycle. So that's what I'm doing here with this chip. I just have it set up to count up to 15 and recycle, and just keep looping. And I send these binary outputs or uh, values to the four outputs here and then connect the scope to the output of the analog conversion and put it on the scope here and you can see we have a little rising thing so all it's doing is counting up and as it counts up the voltage rises a little bit makes a little stair step and we have the 16 levels. Now what's interesting here, if I unplug the, see what is this, that'd be the least significant bit. If I unplug that, so now there's only three bits. And look what happens. Three bits we can only have possible total of eight different combinations and there you go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps. So unplug another wire, and now there's only two bits left, and there's four possible combinations. Unplug that, so there's one bit left, and you get a square wave because it's just zero and one. So I'll plug these back in one by one and watch the screen.
as it increases up to the original four bits. Pretty neat. Now I was thinking, what if I split this into two two-bit channels and put one to the scope channel one and one to the scope channel two and we'll look at the uh, XY mode. Okay, so I broke these channels into two separate two-bit channels just by uh, disconnecting this, changing it to 1K and sing sending it to ground like the bottom resistor here is. And it's still running the same program. It's still counting. I just uh, and rearrange the diodes a little, or the resistors a little bit there. And uh, here's what you see. I'm going to separate that a little bit. You can see the separate waveforms. Of course, these were from the least significant bit. This is channel 2. So it's a higher frequency than the most significant two bits, which were this channel. Or at least now on that channel. Okay. Now let's see what it looks like if I uh, punch up the XY mode. Yeah, let me adjust that. So now I'm getting a 4x4 grid of 16 dots. So there's you know, four possible combinations for one channel and four for the other. And since one is X and one is Y, you get this 16-point this, uh, array here. Now I want to see if I can adjust the scope to draw the vectors between those dots. And uh, I'll have to come back here and see what I can do. Well, I ended up turning the persistence on the scope on. And that helps. I also used a low-pass filtering. And what that does is kind of softens that waveform up a little bit so it's easier to for the scope to draw the vectors out. And on that grid of 16 dots, this is the pattern it makes. So if I take a piece of graph paper and you know number the dots in each direction, then I can draw vectors any way I want to and program that into the chip and have it draw out a pattern for me. So let's try that. Okay. So I laid out a grid and remembering the how it scanned on that you know when I did the XY on the scope how it scanned that pattern out. I knew the order of the dots, so I, it goes like this zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to fifteen. So and I numbered all that out and then come up with this design. So I went in this direction like this, back to zero, up like that. And then I started converting these to binary. And I said, wait a minute, the software will do that for me. So all I have to do is just put the number in. So I put in 0, 1, 2, 3, 7, 11, 15, all the way around in the direction I made this. Now I didn't skip ahead, you know, you would think that I can go from 0 to 3, 3 to 15. Well I can try that and see what happens, but I wanted to keep the spaces about the same so I wouldn't have, you know, problems with it drawing out on the scope. So I went point to point like this instead of skipping over. Here's the program. It's not really a program. It's just uh, I'm just setting the frequency here. You know, it it's, uh, defaults at 4 megahertz. That 08M chip does. And uh, I'm setting these to outputs, these pins to outputs. Pin 0 is always an output, so you, you can't monkey with that. And uh, this is just a marker because I go back to that marker to loop it. And here's the numbers I punched in. Now you're seeing something funny here. 
I had to add 8 to any number over 7. And that's because of the unfortunate way the pins are on the 08M. See, here's uh, output, 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 input, and output. These, um, some of these pins you can make either input or output, but this third one is always an input. I can't change it. So that's a problem when when I have a number more than seven, you know, one, one, one plus one is one, zero, zero, zero in binary. That puts that in the input pin position. So if I add eight to that, which is binary one, zero, 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 it pushes it over to this position, which is the output pin, and puts it the value supposed to be. So instead of just calculating that in my mind I so I know what dot number that is I wrote it like this 11 plus 8 15 plus 8 so I know that's at position 11 15 and all that and I don't have to you know subtract data from it and try to remember and all that stuff so that's the only reason that's there and that's it and here's the result let me turn the uh, tracing or those dots down a little bit. There's the pattern. Looks pretty good. Had a heck of a time making it work though. I couldn't figure it out. I did take off the capacitors. They are a little bit too aggressive. I just put 22K resistors in place and that along with the parasitic capacitance and I think there's little capacitors inside the probe. Um, those work together to uh, make it work. But I, I think I had a wire that wasn't connecting or something and uh, finally moved it and it was working perfectly. But that's it. That's just a simple drawing with a 4x4 grid using this pickaxe chip. So now I have to take, uh, I have another pickaxe chip with eight outputs and that will allow me to draw much more complex things. I'll try to do something with that, but it's just so simple, there's nothing to it. Well, that was fun. Thanks for watching.